In the silent depths of time, buried beneath layers of history, a revelation has been unearthed, a discovery so profound it could rewrite the annals of our understanding. What if I told you that a recent archaeological find has the potential to validate the stories we've known only from the sacred pages of the Bible? Prepare to have your beliefs challenged, your skepticism shattered. This is not just another discovery. This is a testament of faith etched in stone. Stay with us as we delve into the mystery and reveal the shocking truth. First, there was the unearthing of the name of the Roman governor Pontius Pilate on a monument in Caesarea, Israel, back in 1961. Then in 1990, a significant discovery took place in Jerusalem. An ossuary, a container for human bones, was found bearing the name of Caiaphas, the high priest who played a role in the condemnation of Jesus. Most recently, what could be described as the most astonishing archaeological find related to Jesus has come to light. Another ossuary then surfaced, and this one is inscribed with the names of Jesus, James, and Joseph. Three prominent figures in the New Testament. The ancient Aramaic inscriptions on the limestone box indicate that this once belonged to James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. Consider the scenario of stumbling upon a historical treasure concealed for over 2,700 years, a revelation that fundamentally reshapes scholars' understanding of the Bible. This extraordinary event unfolded before Professor Gershon Gallo's eyes when he unearthed an underground inscription dating back to the era of King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. This inscription unveiled the oldest Bible verse ever documented, and this revelation transpired in December 2022. Intrigued to learn more? Join us as we delve into these thrilling discoveries. King Hezekiah, who ruled over the kingdom of Judah from 715 to 687 BC, is renowned for his military triumphs against the Assyrians and his efforts in religious reform. He was a devoted worshiper of God, striving to abolish local altars and shrines and centralize worship in Jerusalem. One of Hezekiah's remarkable engineering feats was the construction of the Siloam Tunnel. During this period, Jerusalem faced the imminent threat of an Assyrian siege, jeopardizing the city's water supply. In response, Hezekiah oversaw the creation of a tunnel that transported water from the Gihon Spring outside the city walls to the Pool of Siloam within the city, safeguarding its water supply. The tunnel represents a remarkable testament to ancient engineering, hewn from solid rock using only manual tools. It spans over 500 meters with a slight downward slope to facilitate water flow, and workers dug from both ends, meeting at a midpoint about 250 meters from either side. Remarkably, within this 2,700-year-old tunnel, an unexpected discovery was made. In 1909, a French archaeologist came across a smooth rock surface, but believed it held no inscriptions. However, Eli Shukran, a respected expert among archaeologists excavating ancient Jerusalem, harbored suspicions that faint inscriptions might exist within the frames, invisible to the naked eye. Shukran enlisted the assistance of Gershon Galil to investigate the rock wall engravings further, aiming to validate his theory. Professor Galil recounted, we captured high-definition images of these frames, revealing intriguing and unforeseen texts in the circular room adjacent to the Canaanite pool near the Gihon Spring. The recently uncovered inscription is etched to the right of the entrance to Tunnel 4, measuring just 48 by 38 centimeters and situated 140 centimeters above the floor. Two Israeli archaeologists, Shukran and Galil, successfully deciphered this 8th century BC inscription found on a tunnel wall beneath ancient Jerusalem's city of David. This inscription corresponds to significant sections from the Bible's Books of Kings and Chronicles, chronicling the deeds of King Hezekiah. Their diligent work overturned a consensus that had stood for over a century. The newfound inscriptions comprise 11 lines of text, all fully translatable by the archaeologists. Described as one of the most important archaeological discoveries in Israel's history by a professor of biblical studies in ancient history at the University of Haifa, these inscriptions include five extensive royal inscriptions of King Hezekiah of Judah, encompassing dozens of lines and hundreds of letters. Professor Gershon Gelil, the director of the Center for Biblical Studies in Ancient History at Haifa University, and Eli Shukran from the Bible and Ancient History Research Institute, successfully interpreted these enigmatic lines written in ancient Hebrew characters. The inscriptions summarize the first 17 years of King Hezekiah's reign, spanning from the late 8th century BC to the early 7th century BC. According to Galil, they enumerate the king's significant achievements, including infrastructure development, religious and political leadership, military conquests, and wealth accumulation. 
An excerpt from the 11-line, 64-word and 243-letter inscription reads, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, made the pool and the tunnel in the 17th year, on the second day of the fourth month of King Hezekiah. The king directed the water into the city through a tunnel, leading it into the pool. He defeated the Philistines from Ekron to Gaza, establishing the Oreb unit of the Judahite army. He dismantled idols, eliminated the high places, and cut down the Asherah poles. King Hezekiah accumulated substantial quantities of silver, gold, perfumes, and fine ointment in his treasuries and in the house of the Lord. This summary inscription, as Galil explained, is organized thematically rather than chronologically, comprising five segments, the Water Project, Conflicts with Philistia, Religious Reform, and Wealth Accumulation. It contains passages that closely resemble or echo those found in the Bible, such as 2 Kings 18.4 and 2 Kings 18.8 demonstrating that these royal inscriptions and chronicles served as the basis for the scriptures in the Book of Kings. These inscriptions validate the historical accuracy of the Bible, dispelling notions of it being a work of imagination, as suggested by some academics. They provide solutions to long-standing questions debated by scholars for years. They offer evidence that King Hezekiah assumed control over Philistia, especially Ekron, and established a military presence there. Additionally, the inscriptions attest that Hezekiah executed a comprehensive reform aimed at eradicating idolatry and promoting the worship of the Lord among the Israelites. These newly unearthed inscriptions, closely aligned with biblical texts, provide substantial corroborating evidence for the reliability of the Bible. Tel Dan Inscription In 1993, during excavations at Tel Dan, Archaeologists made a significant discovery, an inscription featuring the term BYTDWD. Their compelling argument was that this inscription translates to House of David and originates from the 9th century BC. What made this finding especially valuable was that it had been sealed beneath an ash layer associated with a later Assyrian destruction event, precisely dated to 733-722 BC. An ash layer is a treasure trove for archaeologists because anything found beneath it is inherently older, and there is no possibility of intrusion by more recent artifacts. The pottery found just below this destruction layer dates back to the 9th and 8th centuries BC, confirming that the inscription, known as the House of David inscription, belongs to this time period. Although some scholars have attempted to offer alternative explanations, suggesting that BYTDWD might refer to a place, name, or a designation for a temple dedicated to a deity. It is more likely that it refers to the ancestral lineage of David, who was the second king of the United Monarchy, and arguably one of the most significant rulers in Israel's history. Additional support for this interpretation comes from the likely appearance of the term BYTDWD on the Mesha Stella, also known as the Moabite Stone, dating to the 9th century BC. Ketef Hinam Scrolls in 1979, Israeli archaeologist Gabriel Barquet conducted excavations in a burial cave at Ketev Hinnom, located southwest of Jerusalem. This tomb followed the typical Late Iron Age burial structure of the late 7th century BC in Judah. During this period, Judean burials often took place in rock-cut caves. When an individual passed away, they were laid on a burial bench within the tomb, alongside personal belongings like vases, jewelry, or small items. Once the body had decomposed, the person's bones were placed in a container beneath the burial bench. During the excavation of one such container, the team came across two tiny silver scrolls. These scrolls posed a challenge because of their metal composition, making it difficult to unroll and decipher their text. They began with the larger of the two scrolls, a painstaking process that spanned three years. When fully unrolled, it measured a mere three inches, 7.6 centimeters, in length. As they examined it closely, they discovered finely etched characters on its surface. The first word they managed to decipher was Yahweh. After considerable effort, they were able to read the complete content of the scroll, which turned out to be the priestly benediction from number six. The smaller scroll also contained the same benediction from number six. Due to the lengthy process of unrolling and deciphering, the material was not published until 1989. These two scrolls, relatively obscure to many, are currently on display at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. They hold the distinction of being the earliest known references to biblical texts in Hebrew. Remarkably, they predate the earliest Dead Sea Scrolls by more than four centuries, making them invaluable for matters of textual criticism. While numerous scholars previously argued that the priestly benediction was composed after the exile, 
with its earliest origins dating to the 4th century BC. These physical examples now provide evidence of the Benediction's existence from the late 7th century BC. Additionally, the discovery of two plaques featuring the same benediction at a burial site underscores the central role of the priestly benediction in the religious practices of the Israelites. The Rosetta Stone. In 1798, Egypt witnessed the invasion of Napoleon and his entourage, which included a team of scholars and artists with the purpose of documenting the country's monuments. Among the most significant discoveries from this expedition was the Rosetta Stone, which would prove to be invaluable as a crucial tool for deciphering the mysteries of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. This stone artifact originated from the era of Ptolemy V, around 204 to 180 BC, and bore inscriptions in three scripts, Demotic, Greek, and hieroglyphic. The Greek script, well understood by scholars of the time, turned out to be a translation of the ancient Egyptian language featured on the stone. The successful translation of hieroglyphics marked the inception of the study of ancient Egyptian texts and grammar, laying the foundation for the modern field of Egyptology. The Dead Sea Scrolls. In 1947, a group of shepherds stumbled upon a cave nestled in the rugged. Their discovery would soon be heralded as the most remarkable archaeological find of the 20th century. In the subsequent years, similar remote caves in the vicinity yielded a treasure trove. What did these caves contain? They held over 800 fragmented documents, predominantly comprising Hebrew writings inscribed on leather, with a few on parchment, including fragments from 190 biblical scrolls. While most of these scrolls are relatively small, containing no more than a fraction of a book, a complete scroll of Isaiah was also among the findings. Virtually every book of the Old Testament is represented, along with other writings cherished by the community inhabiting those caves. It appears that the earliest scrolls date back to the mid-3rd century BC, with the majority originating in the 1st or 2nd centuries BC. Arguably, the most significant contribution of this discovery lies in our understanding of how the biblical text was transmitted over time. It is reassuring to note that the variations between the Old Testament texts found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and various Hebrew editions produced a millennium later, which are still in use today, are exceedingly minor, often involving the tiniest textual nuances. These variations do not affect the core meaning of the text itself. Archaeological discoveries may not serve as definitive proof of Scripture's authenticity, but they hold the capacity to enhance our comprehension and captivate our interest inviting us to delve deeper. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. If you enjoyed this video, we have something special for you. We've delved into the mystery of the Apocalypse Stone and what it's trying to tell us. It's a thrilling exploration that you won't want to miss. Click right here to watch it now, and remember, history is full of mysteries, and together, we'll uncover them one by one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Weird Times for more intriguing historical content. Until next time, keep exploring.